Hello, welcome back to my series of tutorials on mechanical modeling. This video is actually the second part of my previous video on mechanical modeling and visualization. So if you have missed the first part, please click on the link provided at the upper right corner as well as at the description section of this video. Before proceeding further, I strongly recommend you to watch my video on AutoCAD viewports and layouts. I have also provided the link at the upper right corner as well as at the description section of this video. In this video, I deal with creating 2D drawings from a 3D model and plot it on a single sheet of paper. All these things and more is coming up, so stay tuned. Now let's create 2D drawings from this 3D model. For that, I'll click on the layout tab. You will get this layout here and a viewport. I'll erase this particular viewport. So select and erase it. You can determine the paper size. So I'll just right click on the layout and I'll click on page setup manager. And here you can go to modify. Now click on the printer name to DWG to PDF printer. You can choose a paper size. Presently I would like to keep A4 but I would like to keep the landscape orientation. So click on this orientation and give OK and close. Now this is an A4 size paper and you're working on this paper. Now make sure that the home tab is active. On the right side of this ribbon, you will see the base option. Just click on that. You can generate a base view either from the model space or from the inventor. I'll choose model space. Depending upon the speed of the computer, you will get this preview of the base view. Now this base view will act as a reference view from the model space based on which you can generate a number of views. Now you can see that the base view is a friend elevation which is evident from the view as well as from the orientation panel. If you want you can change this view to isometric or any desired view. But presently I would like to keep it as friend elevation. So just make a click on a convenient location on this paper. Now you can either click on the OK button or you can give an enter. Now you will see a rubber band line stretching from this base view. It is nothing but a projection that is generated from the base view. If you keep it straight down, you will get a plan or a top view. And if you keep it at an angle, it is nothing but an angular view, which is an isometric view. I'll keep it over here. Okay. Now if you want, you can have different types of views depending upon how you project your base view. Now I'll just give an enter. You will see the various views created as drawings on the paper. Next, I'll create a sectional elevation. For that, click on the Layout tab. In the Create View panel, we have a section option. Just click on that. You can have different types of sections like full, half, offset, etc. I'll go for full section and then select the view to be sectioned. Then it'll ask you to place the section plane. I'll keep my first point to define the plane here and the second point right underneath. Now you can keep the sectional elevation in a convenient location. I'll make a click here and just give OK or Enter. This is a sectional drawing and the scale is also written. You can also change the various properties and parameters related with these views. For example, if you want to change the scale of the views, just click on the reference view. Now you will get a scale grip. Click on the grip and choose any desired scale. I'll make it 2 is to 1. Since the scale is changed in the reference or parent view, it will get reflected everywhere. But if you select a projected view, you will get the same scale grip and choose a scale, for example, 1 is to 1, only this particular projected view will have that scale. So any changes performed on the reference view will get reflected everywhere. At the same time, you can have individual parameters for the projected views. I'll undo this change. Now I would like to change the visual property of this view. So select that view and you click on edit view. Here you will see different visual styles. I'll choose shaded with visible lines option. Hence you can change the visual property of this particular projected view. Next we will dimension this figure. So I'll click on the annotate tab. Then I'll go to dimension style manager dialog box. Go to modify. Then I'll change the decimal position to single decimal position. And next I'll go to linear. Then I'll select the first extension line and second extension line and pick to define the dimension line location. And you can repeat the same procedure on other areas to indicate the required relevant dimensions. 
Now the here the decimal separator is a comma. Let's change the separator to a period. So I'll go to the same dimension style manager, modify, change the decimal separator to a period. Okay. Now I'll indicate the radius dimension. So I click on radius and you just click on this arc, indicate the radius at a convenient location. Next we will mark relevant dimensions in the plan. So I'll go to radius dimension and click on the circle, keep the value here. Again, repeat radius, click on the circle, again enter to repeat, again enter to repeat. Okay, one more enter, this radius as well as this one. Next we will incorporate one more relevant dimension in the plan view. For that we need a reference arc. So I'll draw a circle first using the center radius option. Choose this as a center and I'll pick this point to specify the radius. Then I'll go to modify and I'll choose the break command and I'll select this point as a first break point and this as a second break point. Okay, it is broken. Now I'll select this arc and change the line type of it to hidden. Next we will perform the dimension. So go to annotate tab and uh, choose radius option. Then choose this arc and the radius is written as 52 but actual dimension is 26. It is shown as 52 because we are in 2 is to 1 scale. So I'll go to text command, then I'll write the value 26 and give an enter and uh, you keep the dimension in a convenient location. Now we have completed the dimensioning part of the figure. Next we will plot this file. Before plotting you can insert the title block if you have already created one using the insert option over here or else you can create a title block right from the scratch. But in that case you have to go for a bigger paper size because we need space over here to incorporate the title block. Anyways, let's plot this layout. So I'll go to application button, click on the print command and here everything is set. The layout will be plotted to the PDF file and you have uh, selected the paper size, everything, you can just preview it. So this is how it will appear once you plot and now you can just give OK and your file will be named as the drawing file hyphen layout.pdf. Now give OK, it's plotted. This completes the two part video tutorial series of 3D modeling of a mechanical component using simple solid modeling techniques in AutoCAD and generating 2D drawings from this 3D model to plot it on a single sheet of paper. Hi everybody, please hit the like button of this video if you liked it and subscribe to my channel SabirCAD if you haven't subscribed already. Now I have something for you. I work as a trainer as well as as a consultant for architects and civil engineers in 3D visualization. I have a website sabircat.com wherein I share my work related experiences and case studies. Please do make a visit to that website. I also have a number of free stuffs for you in that website. I also have a Facebook page AutoCAD Tutorials for All wherein I share my project as well as a number of useful information related with AutoCAD. I also give online training in AutoCAD 2D and 3D from basics to advanced as well as in 3D visualization using AutoCAD 3D, 3ds Max, Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Premiere. You can visit my teachable website. I have provided links at the upper right corner as well as at the description section. So that's all. Thank you so much for your patience and time. May God bless you all.